Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, brethren in Christ. Today is Friday, 1st April, in the year of our Lord, 2022. Today is the first day of the fourth month, April. We thank God for granting us the month of April and we receive the month of April in faith. It shall be a month for more perfect work with God in righteousness, wisdom, and obedience to his word. Our God is a covenant-keeping God, and God is faithful and shall bring to pass all the good promises that God has made to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So the portion for our meditation as given in the daily fountain, our devotion guide of the Anglican Communion is Jeremiah chapter 11 from verse 1 to 17. And the topic is sustaining divine covenant. Sustaining divine covenant. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, open our eyes of understanding that we would understand all those things that, Lord, you have given us in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 11 from verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Hear the words of this covenant and speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and say to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant which I commanded your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people and I will be your God, that I may establish the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. And I answered and said, So be it, Lord. Then the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear the words of this covenant and do them. For I earnestly exhorted your fathers in the day I brought them up out of the land of Egypt until this day, rising early and exhorting them, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but everyone followed the dictates of his evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but which they have not done. And the Lord said to me, A conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words, and they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they cried out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem 
will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of your cities were your gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you have set up altars to that shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal. So do not pray for these people or lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. What has my beloved to do in my house? Having done lewd things with many and the holy flesh has passed from you. When you do evil, then you rejoice. The Lord called your name green olive tree, lovely and of good fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled fire on it, and its branches are broken. For the Lord of hosts who planted you has pronounced doom against you for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense to Baal. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, let's turn to our guide. In our text today, we see that Judah had gone back into the idolatry she was saved from. The people had gone back to the sin of their forefathers, as stated in verses 9 and 10. This was an unfortunate departure from the divine plan of making Judah God's people and of God being their God through all generations. From the scriptures, we realize that God enjoys seeing his covenant circled from generation to generation. He loves it when his covenant with our people sustains a divine move from one era to another. Summarily, I want us to look at these things again where we have read God gave a message to prophet Jeremiah in which God instructed him to speak to the people of Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel, about their violation of God's covenant with them and the grave consequences of their actions. Indeed, all the towns of Judah and the city of Jerusalem were to hear the case that God had against them. Brethren, we know that the people of Israel were God's special people. God chose them to bless them and ordained them the means of bringing salvation to the earth. God initiated this relationship with Abraham and sustained it with his descendants, Isaac and Jacob. And then God brought the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt and led them to the land flowing with milk and honey and made a covenant with them which involved obedience to God's commandments so that the people will be God's people and God their God. By breaking the covenant, the people had rejected God. Indeed, God described the return of the people to evil and idolatrous ways as intentional and their planned rebellion. Therefore, God declared that calamity would come upon them and that those gods they served would not save them. 
and to even think that these gods were as many as the number of their towns, meaning each town had their own gods. And they also had shrines of Baal as they had streets. God also instructed Jeremiah not to pray for the people in verse 14 of Jeremiah chapter 11. And by losing the privilege of intercession by the prophet, it is also part of the consequences of breaking the covenant of God. Another consequence is the destruction by fire stated in Jeremiah chapter 11, 16 and 17. So rather than the promised blessings, the people got judgment against themselves. In fact, God pronounced cause for disobedience in verse 5, to which Jeremiah responded, Amen, in agreement to God's justice. On the other hand, God wants to forgive and restore. God does not want to utterly destroy his people. God's plans for them are wonderful. He wants to give them hope. He wants to give them a future. And God longs for a loving relationship with his people. So notwithstanding that God loved Israel as a beloved wife, God will not deal with her in her evil and unfaithful ways. In verse 15 of Jeremiah chapter 11, Judah was referred to as beautiful and fruitful green olive tree, which represents richness, blessing, and anointing. But that tree had broken and burning branches, which represents the individual sinner being broken off. So we can see that although God kept his own part of the covenant with his people, his people were not faithful and God is not happy with such a situation. Brethren, Christians are God's special people having been called to faith in Christ. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become children of God and heirs of the covenant of life in Christ with all the privileges thereunto. On our own part, we are to sustain the divine covenant with God and ensure that it is passed from one generation to another. Our guide, the Daily Fountain, tells us that God loves it when his covenant with his people sustains a divine move from one era to another. So as believers, it is our responsibility to obey God as well as ensure that our divine covenant with him is passed from one generation to another. How can we do this? By consistent obedience to God's word and a sequential teaching of his word. So obedience to God's word is not negotiable and teaching of God's word is an imperative. Anyone who has not yet come under the covenant of new life in Jesus Christ should not delay further but make peace with God today. And the time is now. Indeed, when we are born into a family, we become members of that family. And that is the same way Jesus has taken us into the family of God through a spiritual birth. And Jesus intends that we pass this on to others, especially within the place where we find ourselves so that more and more people are brought into God's family. And that way, we sustain 
this divine covenant that we have with God. So we need, therefore, to take these steps. If we are not yet sure, we are under this covenant of new life in Christ. One is that we need to be humble. We need to agree that we are far from God and so in danger of judgment and that judgment will lead to condemnation and eternal death. Two, we need to admit that we need to be rid of sins and turn to Jesus Christ for cleansing of sins. Three, we need to be repentant and shun sins because sins hinders prayer life and rob us of spiritual power. Four, we need to speak the truth in love. Do what we can to turn others, sinners, back to God. You can see how prophet Jeremiah spoke publicly concerning the visions God gave to him. God said, proclaim it. And prophet Jeremiah proclaimed the word of God with courage. So we are to also declare the word of God so that it can bring salvation to others and sustain our lives. Then finally five, we have to be prayerful to see God's face, especially concerning our lives, concerning our families, and concerning the nation and the world. So as we take these five vital steps, may God bless us and help us so that we do not return to where we have been brought out from. So our guide prays, we, in, in our guide, the prayer is, as we face the day, may we receive the grace to preserve and transfer God's divine covenant with you and us to another life that we will receive the grace from God to be able to preserve and sustain the co divine covenant of God and be also able to transfer that covenant to another life. So we thank God for refreshing us today, the first day in the month of April. And we know that when the word of God goes forth, it does not return to God without accomplishing that purpose for which God has sent it. This first day of the month, God will make his word to come alive in our lives so that we live according to his word and be obedient to his calling so that we will not fail to keep our own part of the covenant that God has with us. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, help me to preserve your covenant. Dear Lord, help all of us, your children, to preserve your covenant. Dear Lord, help us to also be able to transfer this covenant to others coming after us, our children, our children's children, and every other person around us so that your word will be confirmed in our lives. We will not face the kind of calamity that people who are disobedient are condemned to. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.